Hello and welcome to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. I'm your host Jo Millman and this is episode 100, The Great Shiny Bees Hex Buff Amnesty. Hello and welcome to episode 100 of the Shiny Bees podcast. I'm your host, Joe Milmai, and this is episode 100. Who would have thought it? Who'd have thought we'd get to the ton all those days ago, all that time, way back in the South Africa Chronicles with Billy the Boomslang, who I'm assured is still going strong in my garage in Limpopo, and uh, still hanging out in the palm trees above the garage and who thought we'd make it from there to here it's a little bit crazy really I mean you start off and you start going you get to kind of episode 20 odd and you think I'm doing quite well I've been around for a while now and when you get to episode 80 odd you're like oh I'm nearly there I'm nearly at 100 and what's going to happen when I get to 100 you know will I turn into a pumpkin I know, I don't appear to have turned to a pumpkin just now. It might happen when I upload it to the internet, you never know. Um, But yeah, we're here nonetheless as as the best UK podcast of 2016, the most engaged audience of 2015, and a whole lot of fun and comedy knitting patterns in between. I really can't quite believe we've made it this far. And I'm sure there's some suitable hair rock music that I could insert here to to fully explain my feelings about getting to episode 100 but I've not instead I've got a little episode of fun for you coming up so a big welcome to any new listeners that have joined us at the century hi I hope you'll enjoy it and if you're a returning listener and some of you will be returning for the 100 plus time then thank you once again as always I really appreciate you listening and I appreciate all the support that you give the podcast and have done since 2012 that's how long we've been going now nearly four years I think it might, I think it might have just gone past the podiversary the fourth podiversary I think it's at the end of July I think I just missed it in the rush so yeah it's all good all good so what have I got for you today? Well, I've got a little bit of, of wistful chatter. I didn't want to make it into too big a thing. There's a lot of pressure to make episode 100 into this big, amazing thing. And we do kind of have a plan for a big, amazing thing. But the episode itself is going to be fairly modest, I think is probably the word, because I want you to get out and working on this big, exciting thing that we've got planned. It's quite funny. It's quite amazing. I'm very excited to tell you about it. But first up, I have a shout out, and that is for Chelociraptor, who has been sending me some lovely pictures. Thank you for the picture of the toilet roll cover patterns and the tissue box cover patterns for a birthday cake and and for a cheeseburger. They're just hilarious. Crochet, of course, because the crochet has got, got this whole thing, comedy, yarn craft thing down pat quite frankly, but I enjoyed those very much, so thank you. Also, a thank you to Gifnock Girl, who sent me pictures of some Pokeballs. Following on from the last episode, she decided to make some Pokeballs for her grown-up daughter who's got into Pokemon Go, which pleased me. As you can imagine, nothing pleases me more than when someone actually decides to create one of the comedy knitting patterns that gets featured in a pattern pick. Now, I am disappointed to report that neither if not girl or indeed anyone else appears to have crocheted a pikachu bun cover yet a bun sock and i'm sure it's all because you're trying to get it absolutely perfect when you style the photos and i'm sure that's exactly what's happening or indeed trying to find the perfect man bun on which to put said sock indeed someone also sent me a link to an article i think it's from the huff post that shows a place that offers miniature fedoras, a miniature fedora to put onto your man bun. Ladies and gentlemen, you've seen nothing till you've seen a Pikachu's bun sock cover. Sod, you know, sod, sod fedoras. 
and and sod is going to be mentioned several times in this interview so if you're particularly um not this interview this episode even if you're particularly sensitive to the word sod you might want to uh switch off now because it's going to be coming up quite quite a bit as you probably guessed from the title so thank you to both of you for cheering up my last two weeks and um yeah kudos to the first person who makes the pikachu uh bun sock cover i'm yet to see a photo so 100 episodes then i started thinking about how we could celebrate this a few weeks ago and as you all know i sort of threw it out to the floor for some ideas about what we could do because i wasn't really sure what would be the best thing to do for it. And I wanted to make it fun and a bit of a celebration of all of us, our time together and getting to know so many of you and meet you in person and see all of your knitting and stuff. It's it's really, really quite a fortunate position to be in that I get to chat to you every week and I get to meet so many of you in real life as well. And some of you that I've still not got to meet in real life yet, but I hold out great hope that I will. And... I thought about some of my favourite episodes because it's always good when you get to episode 100 of a podcast and there's like, you know, another 99 behind it. A lot of people will only have come to the podcast quite late on. So I think it's always good to kind of highlight some particular favourites from the back catalogue to keep everyone busy. And I am going to take a short break after this episode because I'm in the middle of selling my house. More on that in a little bit because I've got a funny story for you. But um, you might not have necessarily discovered these particular episodes yet. So I thought I would pull out some of my top favourites, my most memorable episodes uh, to direct you to. And there will be links straight to these in the show notes so you can find them easily. One of my favourites ever was the it was very, very early on in the first 10 episodes where I made Malva pudding, which is a South African staple dessert dish that is full of butter and even more calories it's delicious very similar to sticky toffee pudding but not the same but that if you can imagine what that looks like mulva pudding looks quite a lot like that and has a very similar kind of setup but it tastes different i made this with my friend justice um who is a fighter pilot in South Africa and also is Afrikaans and um, excellent at cooking. So I went round to his house to make uh, Malva pudding in one of the episodes, which was really good fun. It's like one of my first ever interviews and uh, the, the Malva pudding was delicious. And it was it was just a really great fun fun time to be making that cake and, and chatting to him during that episode. It's just something completely different to what you get in the show now. More favourite interviews, it was a bit of a toss-up between um, going to Countessa Blaze, which was quite a a recent episode, to do some dyeing and dye some yarn. My fantasy colourway brought to life. That was really good fun because I always have good fun with Lindsay. But I also enjoyed the Kate Davies episode because it was her first ever podcast interview. And there are lots of people that go on a lot of podcasts and I'm more inclined to go and find the people you don't hear from. I'm quite a nosy person, so I want to go and find those people who I want to know more stuff about, that I have questions for, that I think are doing things in a really good way or are producing some really interesting things. Or just that I think, yeah, I quite admire you actually. You're doing a really brilliant job and I'd, I'd like to know kind of how you tick. And that's mostly what dictates who I go and speak to and both of those ladies very different setups both had various health issues that they've overcome and are both kind of caning it in the business world now um in particular and again both very interesting interviews so that was the Countess of Blaze interview and the Kate Davies one Also, thinking back to the sock surgery, which was one of the catalysts for me going to a weekly schedule and for being able to get into a rhythm with that and actually stick to it. And that was all thanks to the lovely, delightful, absolute superstar, lovely South African friend, Claire Devine of Knit Share Love. It was um, previously... Yarn and Pointy Sticks, and she's gone to Knit Share Love. She's 
absolutely wonderful, really, really nice lady and does some amazing knitting patterns as well. And I just enjoyed the banter with her and with Kate whilst we were doing the sock surgery. It was a real cool kind of time in the podcast to be collaborating with such great ladies. It's also been really good fun to work with Louise at Knit British doing stuff for Edinburgh Yarn Festival and the whole kind of podcast lounge thing. That was a new sort of initiative that was brought together by Mika and Joe and being able to be involved in that as well was really cool. And probably I think if I was going to do my biggest one thank you, because I have lots of thank yous, but the biggest one I think would be to Martine Ellis of Creative Me, formerly of iMake, who basically bantered me into becoming a podcaster in the first place because I don't think without her encouragement I would have gone for it and without the encouragement of all of you guys who come and listen week in week out and you know send me messages and show me your knitting and all that kind of good stuff that I would have carried on so here's to you chink nice little gin and tonic and a big fat cheers from me for 100 episodes so As I mentioned, I'm going to have a little break in the podcast schedule now and I'm not entirely sure how long for. I'm not going away forever, don't worry. I mentioned it a few episodes ago, but I am in the middle of selling my house. It's up for sale now. The money pit is available. If you would like it, come buy it. Um, But it's up for sale and there's a few changes going to be going on at Shiny HQ, not least yet another address. Um... In the next few months, it's going to be quite busy. So I really don't want to say I can commit to a weekly schedule because it's not going to be possible. And I don't want to put out stuff that's not 100% fun because I have a lot of other things to manage. I just don't know how things are going to go. So my idea is, my plan is to um, take a good sort of month or so off now and reattack this in mid-September, depending on how the whole house thing goes. And at that point, probably do a series type podcast, which is something that was brought to my attention by Colin Gray of School of Podcasting. He's a total babe. He's based in Dundee in Scotland. He's got a lovely Scottish accent Um, and he's a right sweetheart as well. He's a lovely guy. He's really good at teaching all the podcasting stuff. So if you're one of the people that are interested in doing your own podcast, you would do a lot worse than to go to the podcast host. Um, dot com and have a look at his stuff he's got some good tutorials and things loads of great articles about tech and all the good stuff and some courses as well he's an absolute sweetie but he did a presentation about making series in out of your podcast instead of going continually week in week out to do it in series instead and i think that's something that's probably going to suit the podcast quite well going forward and it means i can bring everything together in one sort of theme for a few weeks then have a couple of weeks off because I'm finding taking time out of the schedule to just chill tends to produce my better work I think the last two episodes knowing that I've gone to a a every other week episode knowing that episode 100 I could have a bit of time off have been um I've been two of my favorites ever and I've been really well received and I want to be putting out a lot more stuff like that so that is my plan once I've sold my house Um, And in the meantime, I'm going to be fastidiously hoovering everything and dusting everything and tweaking and moving and ruffling lilies and all that kind of good stuff that you do when you are selling a house. So we've had a few viewings. It's been up for sale for about five days. And today, in fact, we had a viewing from a young gentleman who also brought his dad with him. Now, I don't know if any of you have sold houses recently, but basically we, we put our house up for sale with an online estate agency because having dealt with the estate agents locally previously, they're not that good and they're certainly not worth the charge that they put in. And some of my friends had a really good experience with an online estate agency uh, selling their houses very recently up in Scotland. So I thought, right, we'll, we'll have a crack with them then. So we had this view in. And obviously, they take a few details off them first before they come to your house. So I knew what his name was. So, of course, the first thing we did was go and Google him. Or Googled the name and Wigan. Upon which, several, several 
returns came up. And as you can imagine, it was stuff like a guy who's wanted to charge Wigan Council all this money because they'd given him a council house and it had been unfit for purpose and he'd had to pay for all these repairs. And there was another guy who'd been done for speeding. There was another guy who looked proper serial killer on Facebook. And we were just like, oh my giddy aunt, I hope he's not one of these. Because there were some right kind of horror stories. There was one who was doing quite well at Wigan Golf Club. And we thought, yeah, they'll do. You know, got a decent handicap. So maybe he's... Not I'm saying all golf golfers are good guys. But, you know, your general low-level criminality don't tend to play golf. So we thought that was quite a good sign. Anyway, he turned up a, a couple of minutes early, but not rudely so. So I was happy. Although he didn't elect to use my husband's very carefully rewired vintage doorbell probably because it looks like it doesn't work when it absolutely does and um, bless him he came with his dad now I don't know how familiar you are with the menfolk of northern towns but they don't generally tend to be that good looking and I'm not stereotyping at all but on the whole there tend to be various kind of packs of gentlemen loose term there um, that you find so there are the ones that like to wear sportswear all the time in trainers they're generally quite pale and look a little bit greasy and they wear a, oops a bobble hat there's my notes on the floor and there are the ones um the two-step massive as i call them who are almost entirely umpa lumper orange um with very very tight white t-shirts on a lot of tattoos and a very low v-neck usually appear to have some kind of gym slash performance enhancement in, enhancing drug influence, shall we say. You get your general indie kids, we're near Manchester here, so you get quite a lot of um, indie kids with kind of Britpop type oasis of the 90s hair and quite cool sort of flares and stuff. And a lot of my favourite kind of people... Like your kind of goths and your sort of alternative types. There are various packs. But there generally aren't any fit ones. I'm just going to put it out there. There's not enough sunshine here. The grey light doesn't make anyone look good. And I haven't seen anyone remotely fit in Wigan for years. Imagine my surprise when I opened the front door and... A 20-something-year-old Paul Rudd is stood on my doorstep with his dad, who's also pretty fit for his age. <laughs> Rude. It's, it's, all, it's much easier to, to not be that embarrassing 30-something, slightly flirting with someone because you want them to buy your house. Um, but not flirting, but flirting enough for them to think that maybe they've got a chance if they're not that good looking but when they turn up and they look like Paul Rudd and they've brought their fit dad as well you're just like what where do I go from here what am I supposed to say now what am I supposed to do I was all confused luckily I've had several years of training in the RAF of how to deal with people and um, I managed to put on my best sort of air crew banter and not be too embarrassing older lady fawning over young hot bloke particularly because he's married and my husband was also there who's a fitty he's even fitter than the young Paul Rudd lookalike and his dad but you know what I mean you know what I mean you don't expect that you don't want that curveball you don't want someone coming in and you're thinking oh no there's there's a bit of the ceiling I've missed and he's gonna see it and he looks like Paul Rudd anyway if you don't know who Paul Rudd is he's an actor in Hollywood and I took the liberty because I care for you deeply I took (laughs) The liberty of googling Paul Rudd and knitting. And you know what? Not only is he a total fitty, but he also knits as well. I know. I'm as surprised as you are. But he does. So I will include a picture in the show notes for you to admire. And I'm not really sure what he's knitting, but he's also sporting some beautiful Icelandic looking knitwear as well. As if we didn't love him any more. We couldn't love him any more than we already do. So there you go. I might try. I might do like a rogues gallery of fit Hollywood men knitting, or just fitties in general knitting. Um, but yeah, so I'm not really sure if miniature Paul Rudd and his dad. It's a good job his dad came because if he'd come on his own, I wouldn't have believed he was allowed out without his mum. 
<laughs> if miniature Paul Rudd does does indeed buy the house, there will be mention of that in in the follow up episode. But at the moment, he does he's not he's not bought it yet. Let's just put it that way. I bet his wife's dead dead fit as well it always works out that way i just don't know where all the all the beautiful people in wigan go because i've never seen any of them anyway knit club obviously so miniature paul rudd aside and knitting actual paul rudd aside um as i mentioned we were thinking of a way to celebrate the 100th episode of the show and i'd ummed and ahed about various different formats until my night Knightess, Knight in Shining Armour, the Countess, so I guess she'd be the Countess and just not a Knight, but anyway, the Countess, the Blaze one, came to my rescue. Now, I'd previously, backstory, had a conversation with her about a charity in Manchester that helps homeless ladies with sanitary protection. I know, bit of a random conversation, but uh, she does... Um, a lot of charity gigs when she does parties she quite often will donate proceeds or a percentage of proceeds to charity and last year that was the mustard tree in Manchester when she did a Saturnalia party which is a charity that supports homelessness in um, in Manchester which is a, a big problem and becoming bigger and it's certainly something that I've seen here in you know Wigan there only ever used to be one homeless person and there are quite a few now and it seems to be a problem that's getting bigger and something that I think needs to be addressed. This particular charity that I saw was um, called Monthly Gift Manchester and essentially the purpose of the charity is to provide sanitary protection to homeless ladies who are on the streets and have to make the choice between whether they eat or whether they get sanitary protection at the appropriate time of the month. And I sent her a message, I'm like, mate, is there anything we can do about this? I feel like I need to do something. And she said, yeah, well, like, let's just think about it. Let's think on it. Um, so we did. And I didn't come up with any good ideas, but she came up with a bloody brilliant one involving hexy puffs of all things. This is what I love about her. Her brain works at a million miles an hour and she's able to pull all these different bits of information together and come up with a really dastardly plan. So dastardly, I didn't even think of it myself. That impresses me. She's just brilliant. And she's like, right, this is the idea. You need to have a hexipuff amnesty and we will sew all the bits together and we will raffle them off and we'll spend the do- the, the proceeds on sanitary products and donate them to this charity mic drop i was just like yes there can be no more perfect thing no more perfect way no more brilliant way to to celebrate the 100th episode of this podcast than a hexipuff amnesty now you may hear a little bit of shouting outside because the fam have returned but if you're not aware, if you're a fairly new knitter, if you weren't around when the the great Hexipuff madness of 2011 took off, I think it was 2011, I think it was 2011, 12. It certainly was a thing around the time I started the podcast. If you're not aware of what I'm on about when I say Hexipuff, this is a small hexagonal 3D piece of knitting. It was the thing that basically prompted the whole mini skein craze and it was a pattern called or is a pattern called the beekeeper's quilt see it can't get more perfect can it beekeeper's quilt by tiny owl knits and the basic idea is that you get all your sock yarn scraps and you knit them into little 3d hexagons and then you sew them all together and then you have this quilt and it was one of those marmite patterns where some people were totally like over the top into it and we're knitting them all the time. And some people, i.e. me, hadn't, did not understand this whole thing at all. And indeed coined the phrase sod hexipuffs. Hashtag sod hexipuffs. I think that was when I was dis- uh, describing one of Claire Devine's books. And it's since been said that it would indeed be put on my tombstone, basically, if I kicked the bucket. Anyway... 
So I'm in team hashtag sword hexapoffs and then there were lots and lots of people in team hexapoff and it's, it, you know, it's a great way to use up sock scraps but what tended to happen is people would get bored eventually because you need an awful lot of hexapoffs to make a quilt. So they would have like a little basket with like 20, 30 hexapoffs in it. Not enough to make even a quilt for a cat but once you've knit them you can't throw them away. It's like that nitty thing, isn't it? I'll, I'll, I'll get to it, I'll finish it, I can add a few more. And it never happens. Well, now is the time. Now is the time. Come with me, people. Come with me and I will knit one. I will knit one hexapoff. I will do it. I will buy the pattern and I will get my needles out and I will knit at least one hexapoff. And we will bring all of your hexapoffs that are lying around in your knitting basket that haven't been put to use yet. Amnesty time. Get them out. Get them out and let's put them to good use. You need to put your hexipuffs, if you are taking part in the hashtag Hexipuff Amnesty, put your hexipuffs in an envelope, address them to 101 Chorley Road, Swinton, Manchester, which is Countess of Blaze's studio, post them to her. She's very kindly agreed because I'm selling my house and I really don't need 18,000 hexipuffs to arrive when I'm trying to like flog it to mini Paul Rudd and his fit dad, um, I can't have all those hexapuffs around. My brother's actually got half my stash in his two-bedroom flat at the moment, so I can't have the hexapuffs with me. You've got to send them to Lindsay. She can store them in her cellar until the sewing up party. We're going to have a sewing up party towards the end of the year, possibly early next year, depending on the overwhelming demand. And we're going to have a party at the studio and we're all going to get together. We're going to sew up the hexi puffs and make them into quilts and then we're going to have a raffle and all of the proceeds from the amnestied hexi puffs are going to go to, to monthly gift manchester who is with me my friends who wants to get rid of the hexi puffs put your hands up get your hands in the air wave them around i'm there and i will for every for every hundred that we get i'll put it out there for every hundred hexi puffs that arrive at Lindsay's studio i will knit one there you go. I will knit one. Who's with me? Use the hashtag Sod Hexipuffs on Twitter and Instagram and everywhere else. Share it with your friends. Get all your Hexipuffs out and amnesty them. If you want to knit some more to add to it, go right ahead. Get involved. Resurrect the Hexipuff. And I will be back with details of the sewing up party at a later stage. But that's it. This is my celebration. 100 episodes. Let's do something that's going to make a difference for not just us, for other people that actually mean something. Let's do it. You know what I mean? We're all girls together, apart from my lovely boy listeners, who I love deeply. But yeah, let's get it. Let's get involved. So that that is, I'm still so pleased about this is the, the the great shiny bees hexipuff amnesty and um i think this is going to be fun i think there's going to be a lot of fun to be had with this in particular i feel like doing little hexipuffs on tour could be another hashtag hexipuffs on tour and do little little tour pictures of all the places the hexipuffs are before they get sent to the studio we could even make a big ball pit and jump in them at the studio perhaps i'm not sure anyway that is the great hexipuff amnesty so, I promised you it would be a fairly modest sized episode and I intend to stick to that and that will be all for episode 100. I hope you've enjoyed the show and Mini Paul Rudd. Don't forget to head over to the show notes so you can see a picture of actual Paul Rudd doing some knitting and get your hexi puffs together. Drag them out, dust them off girls and boys, let's crack on with these. So have a wonderful week. Thank you so, so much for listening, each and every one of you. I appreciate you totally. And I will speak to you all again soon. Bye. You've been listening to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. If you'd like to get in contact with me, you can do so via the blog or I'm Shiny Bees on Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest and Facebook. You can email me at shinybeesinfo at gmail.com. Music for this episode is provided by Music Alley and it is Adam and the Water Boys and I Need a Drink. I need a drink. <laughs>